Tough one for the Wolverines on Saturday as they lose a one-point decision to Michigan State, 28-27, on a very controversial call late in the game on a two-point extra point coach that looked like it was good, but there was no call made on interference and no call made on the catch, which cost you the ball game. Well, I think it's going to be obvious to our viewers what happened, Jim, and uh, you never like to wait to the last play to decide a game, and I'll give Michigan State credit. They came in to our place and played hard, and yeah, we feel we had a chance to win the game, and with the right circumstances, we did. The problem was is that even though it comes down to that play, and that play costs you, really, if you look back over the course of the game, you had plenty of other opportunities that you let get away. Yeah, we got down there in the second drive. We drove the ball 80 yards down there in fourth and one, and we didn't get it in. And there you look at it, and you say, should you kick the field goal, go for it. Well, I always believe in going for it. We did last year, and we made it. And if you don't, you're putting them in a hole where they got to go 99 yards. So you're going to get good field position. And then we missed a golden opportunity on a short field goal right before half, which would have given us a 10-7 to lead. One of the things about this game was it was supposed to be a defensive struggle. The first two series was anything but defense. No, there was a lot of offense. Uh, Elvis started out, and he, we hit John Vaughn on a swing pass for nine yards, and John ran good today. He got 160-some yards. Here he breaks off tackle for a 10-yard gain, and he had some strong runs. Did a good job hanging on to the football, which was a real concern. Normally, there's a lot of turnovers in this game. But strong running inside the tackle, something you hadn't done against Michigan State for a while. No, we run the ball. We th thought we could. Here Elvis pumps Derek Alexander, and he makes a great catch and dragging his feet in and then going out of the end zone, which is a good catch there. And that led to put us in good field position, or a good position. But they come right back, and then they score on us. This is what is your big concern, is the fact that they were able to move the football fairly consistently, other than the second and third quarter. It's the weakest part of our football right now, Jim. We, we, you know, we've not played like this, and we've got to make sure that we continue, that we, or we don't continue to do this. We've got to make sure we can tackle. We've had too many missed tackles, people in position to tackle, and don't make it, and, and that's tough. They didn't do anything against you. It didn't surprise you, did you? No, not really. There's always a few new wrinkles that you have to adjust to any time you go in a game. But nothing. They just come out and played hard football. And we were playing hard, too. Here they go back to pass. And Enos scrambles and goes in the end zone. And that's not a design quarterback draw. That's a scramble, which is what right. he really hurt you with. Yeah, and he does a good job with it. i got to give him credit here. Here John Vaughn makes a nice, strong run here, 42-yarder. Stiff arms the guy. Just about gets away. And uh, this is our second drive where we had an opportunity to go down and score. Here we're going to hit Desmond over the middle for about 19 yards. Desmond played. He dropped one pass in here. For, for the most part, he's been an exceptional receiver for us. He played year. a great football game against Michigan no State. No question. Then you get John Vaughn loose down the sideline. Now, here's where you go in there, and you get uh, down inside the five. This is your third down play. Right. We go, and we get down in there, and we're awfully close. We just about went in there. This is even very close here, whether he got over or not, but uh, I'm not to debate that call because I'm not in a position. But, uh, you know, we went for it, and we had him backed up then. And, you know, that one I, I don't second-guess myself. Same really play four times in a row some people talked about. Uh, uh, I thought you probably should have gotten in a couple of times on it. Right. They, they weren't the same plays, but it, it appeared to be that way to the spectators. There was a couple off-tackle plays in there, but that was a strength over there. And, and we should have been able to take advantage of it. Defense picked up. Mike Evans gets a sack. Then you come back through the air again and start to go to work. Yeah, Desmond uh, caught another pass, and then Elvis comes back and hits Alexander here, and Derek should have caught that ball. We had uh, too many drop passes, six of them in there, which would have made a big difference. And that cost you the ball, and they come back with a football. All right, here's a big interception for us, Chris Hutchinson. I mixed on that, Jim, and he got hurt there on that play, and it really killed our defense in the second half after he intercepted the ball, and then we come back. Elvis throws to Desmond again, hits him on a nice post pattern, and Desmond made it a great catch, called timeout. We had an easy chip shot here, and we just kick it wide to our left. And at halftime, instead of being out in front, 10-7, it's 7-7, and you got at this point feel pretty disappointed in the fact offense is moving the ball, but they moved the ball on you. Right. Uh, we had gotten down there, you know, two times. That field goal that we missed and the fact that we didn't punch it in when we had it. Second quarter was slow for us. We had a couple drop balls in there, and uh, I thought we missed a couple cuts in there running the ball. But, you know, Michigan State's a good defensive team. We knew that going in. I, 
uh, you know, I figured that we would score 21 to 24 points in this game and have a great afternoon offensively. And, uh, you know, I felt we could control them to at least a touchdown the field goal. As it was, the Wolverines scored 27. It was one point short. Don't go away. We'll come back and look at the second half and that controversial call to close the game when we return on Michigan Replay. I don't think we were too high, too low, or whatever, you know. I think we just played our hearts out, and we came up short. I mean, that's about all you can say, you know. Anytime you're right down in, it was six seconds left in the game. I mean, you know, that's the type of game we knew it was going to be. We was going to have to go into the last round of the fight or whatever, you know, to win this thing, and, you know, we just came up short today. Michigan versus Ohio State. Eric Anderson indicating that the Wolverine defense gave up some long drives, which I know is something is not acceptable in the Michigan football program, but coming out at halftime, 7-7 tie, Mo, did you make any adjustments at all defensively or offensively from what happened in the first half? Oh, you always make some adjustments, Jim, and uh, there's a couple new wrinkles that we had on both sides of the ball we had to adjust to, but most of those were done on sideline prior to even going in the locker room. You just reconfirm your thoughts and put in a new couple new formations and things that you want to concentrate on in the emphasis. You got the ball to open the second half and again went to work offensively, moved it smartly. Yeah, well they got the ball and then we stopped them, Jim. And then here we hit Howard again for 14 yards. Then we come back and uh, give the ball to John Vaughn. He runs good in here. We got a good drive going here. John makes a good cut back and comes out the other end. These are the tough yards you wanted him to make early in the season, and he's proven he can do it. All right, here's a big one on third and seven. Elvis again throwing to Desmond. I thought Elvis threw the ball extremely well. He was on the money uh, for the most part all the time other than the one interception. Here John Vaughn cuts back. This is a great run by John. This is effort hanging onto the ball and just never saying die. That's probably one of his best runs uh, of the year, really. Then you get back down inside third and goal. Yeah, interference they, call. Yeah, they wrapped uh, Derek Alexander around the neck. We got the pass interference to get the ball down on the two-yard line. And then this is a controversial call. Yeah, this one isn't, Jim, so much. I knew this from the sideline. John lays the ball out, and he's trying to lay it out. When it hits the ground right there, it's dead. I mean, when the ball, whenever the ground causes a fumble, it's dead. Then Bunch goes over the top. So that wasn't, a, you know, you try to do that as a player, and, and uh, uh, but once the ball causes a fumble, there's no question about that. You got to leave 14-7, and maybe the toughest thing is every time you scored, they came back and answered. Came right back, and that was a big problem. Uh, a couple things here. We got they got to running the ball too much. Plays such as this, uh, we got knocked out of there. We got to play that tougher. And then uh, our pass rush fails here. We don't get any pressure on Enos, and when we do, he did things like this. That was and a killer there on a third down and long play, and he gets out of there and runs out and gets the first they, down. They made a couple of real third long plays. This is one right here where we got everybody covered. Then he just has too much time. He goes back and he dumps a guy off that I don't even know was a primary receiver in, a, in the pattern or a secondary I don't guy. think he was in the pattern. I think he was a blocker that just kind of rolled out into the flat. Exactly, flight. yes. So we go to the fourth quarter, maybe the only mistake Elvis made all day. Right, he threw this a little bit high, trying to get it over the linebackers to Derek. We'd hit that. And here, Iquinella makes a good interception. But we get them, and they had a personal foul on the play, blocking below the waist. We put them in lo a long distance from our goal line, but yet they come back. And here Enos is scrambling again, making a big play here. And uh, they take this ball down in and score. His scrambling did hurt. And here's another one, third down. And then, boy, they make some big All things right. happen. So you can't give him this much time, Jim. You just, you got to get some pressure. You got to get a guy in his face, make him throw up over the top or something. That, that breaks their rhythm a little bit. This is just bad tackling in here. You got to wrap this guy up and bring him down. There's no reason to have that kind of a touchdown. Now that puts Michigan State up 21-14. And there's very little time left. And this is about as big a play as you can get. Right, we thought we had this one other time where we were going to break one out of there. I don't know if it's going to go for the distance. And one guy blocked it wrong. And here's Desmond again. He does a good job on the return. Got some blockers out front. Makes a great catch there. Then goes in. Uh, for a big 95-yard touchdown. Five minutes left in the game. You kicked the extra point. Any thought of going for two at this point? Yeah, I thought about it, but I thought there was enough time that we didn't have to, and if we could get the ball back and then go with the field goal or whatever. And then this is their first play following the kickoff, and this is huge. Right. Again, it's the pass rush that doesn't get there. They hit uh, Hickson again, their, their tailback. He did a good job executing the play. you got to give him credit there. Then on third and eight, here we get a face mask penalty right there. 
And uh, that gives them another big play on third down, which moves the ball closer and then sets us that run up by uh, Duckett. And they go in and they get the 28-21 lead. But the game's not over. With two minutes left, your kids come back. This is something. I felt we could. I, I thought we, you know, Elvis can throw the ball a little bit. Here's a big fourth and sixth play where he hits Desmond again over the middle to give us a first down. He has some key passes in here on some tough situations. This is third and three. He goes over the middle to our tight end, Dave, Dave Diebolt. There were big plays all through this drive, and Elvis really preferred. All right. Here's one on fourth and two. Elvis going back, hitting John Vaughn on the sideline. John gets out of bounds right away to kill the clock. I think it was like 27, 25 seconds right there. And then here's your big one. Elvis come back and hit Desmond on a good one, and uh, that was a good play, which set up our touchdown up, up at the top there to Derek Alexander, who'll come back and catch the ball in a fade. Give us. Go for two points, and here's the play. You take us through it. Right. Well, we wanted to go for two. We wanted to win the game. We got a good streak going. We got a lot of things. Here you can see, I think it's very obvious that we go and we get tripped up here. I knew he'd tackle the guy, Jim. The thing I didn't know is Desmond Howard right now catches the ball, goes to the ground. The ground actually causes a fumble again. And basically, you know, from what it shows right there, that is a, t uh, that is a touchdown, which counts for two plays. And there's no, yeah, there's no recourse at this point for you in any situation like that because there is no replay in college football. You can't really... You just kind of say it's a bad call. Yes, and the only thing you can do as a coach in a football team is regroup and go play the next week. But it's, it's sad when those things happen. Uh, we see them happening too much today in college football. Yeah, I mean, we had Colorado get five downs. Uh, Illinois gets a forward lateral. Uh, this one happens uh, to you against Michigan State. It's not just happening in Michigan Stadium. It's happening all over the country. Right, and it's, it's a thing that somehow has to be corrected. And... Uh, it's it's just a sad thing, but I what I don't want to let happen to our football team is that we dwell on that. Yeah, you don't want to say make any excuse stuff. You got some football left to play. This thing is not over yet, as far as you're concerned. Right, and we had some guys that didn't play as well as they could have played, Jim, and and I think you know that as well as I do. And yet I'll I'll tell you this: we had some guys out there playing their hearts out, and uh, uh, you know it's just one of those things an interstate rivalry that uh, it's a hard fought battle and. Uh, Next thing we have to do is play Iowa. And that's the next game coming up. Before we get to Iowa, though, we've got to talk about a team from out east, Penn State, joining the Big Ten. That's next, after we hear from Desmond Howard on that controversial call when Michigan Replay continues. I'm not going to go around talking about how the referee made a bad call or anything, because he obviously made the call which he thought he saw. But I believe if you replay the play, you know, like it would be prior to now in the news, everybody in the nation would see that, first of all, he grabbed me and tackled me. Second of all, it was a catch, and then when I hit the ground, it came out. But, you know, the guy made the call he thought was right, so we have to live with it. For the latest University of Michigan sports information, call the Wolverine Sports Hotline, 1-900-4-GO-BLUE. It's coaches and players' comments. Athletic department was met with surprise and dismay in some circles. Even the revered leader of the Nittany Lions, Joe Paterno, was caught in the middle. I thought the whole process was such that if I were an athletic director or I was a coach at one of the, uh, one of the Big Ten schools, I would have sat back crying out loud just exactly the kind of reaction they had. Uh, but, I, but, uh, but having talked to our president and, and, and what happened, I think it was, a, it was a, probably a good way to do it. Regardless of whether we, uh, my nose was out of joint a little bit. I'm sitting there with a projector in December looking at BYO pictures. I get a call, so we're in the Big Ten. I said, what? <laughs> Who's you kidding me? <laughs> No, we're in the Big Ten. So, I mean, it's... So I know exactly what they went through. And then I'm saying to myself, holy cat, how do we do this? How do we do that? And, and, and it's not an easy job to absorb a university. With, we have 28 sports. The fallout from the initial announcement has settled now, and most observers feel the move benefits everyone involved. But there are still some critics. They feel the admission of Penn State spells the beginning of the end for Northwestern as a conference member. Paterno is not buying that theory, though. But I have not sensed that at all. I don't get that feeling. All, and I don't... Came up short. But we'll be back next week, I guarantee you that.